dirt roads to rock crawling, tuba chuck to screaming eagle, moonshine to 50 year old single malt. We talk about it all here on Wheelin' Wine and Whiskey with your hosts, Jason and Chris. Welcome to Wheeling Wine and Whiskey, episode 157. Well, I keep wanting to say live. It's remote, Chris. We are remote We're at Prairie City <laughs> Ultra 4 Race. It's been a quite a couple days here. Oh, baby. Holy smokes. And a lot of action, lot and lot of freaking carnage, man. Yes. I'm seeing dollar signs just going, and I'm I'm holding my wallet as I'm actually watching these cars <laughs> roll and stuff on the track, man, because it's 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 crazy. It's scary. First, you want to make sure the driver's okay. Yeah, absolutely. And then, it's like, and then there's fires. We had fires oh, yeah. today. Fires. People we know. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, you know, it's, it's like, okay, are they okay? Okay, they're cool. Oh, man, that car is effed up so um anyway uh, that's racing baby it's racing i know <laughs> i know but this this track seems to eat them up eat up tires and eat up cars but uh hey so uh we give till it hurts we do give till it hurts here and uh and you know we uh we try to feature the top ultra four drivers whether they're old or young yeah old or young I mean, it's great. Uh, we love it. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, we're renaming the podcast. You ready? Oh, what is it? Wheeling Wine, Whiskey, and Waylon. Nice. We have Waylon Campbell here. Woohoo! How you doing, Waylon? Ah, uh, pretty damn good. Right on, man. Hey, thanks for carving out some time for us. Uh, it was cool. You, uh, you had wandered into our camp yesterday to test out your car. <laughs> Yeah. And and, and uh, we said, hey, you got to get you on the podcast. You're like, okay. <laughs> like, sweet. Yeah, no, I had a, I had a quite a bit of problems during practice yesterday and needed somewhere to test, and you guys just happened to be right here. And you know, I, <laughs> <laughs> I always talk to people. I'm a chatty Cathy. So. The, your whole family's like that. I mean, just you guys have always been approachable, and, you know, it's not this all that in a bag of chips attitude. So well, that's, you got to be, man. Yeah. It's, that's, how you, that's how you make friends and keep friends around. Exactly. Yeah, and it, it's good. And it's, the fans love it. You guys are obviously fan favorites and been around in this sport forever. So Put on a uh, hell of a show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah some days. <laughs> <laughs> Most days. <laughs> so um, let's, let's get in, because I, I remember seeing you... Uh, um, at Donner, you know, we rock events, Donner rock crawl events, um, doing, doing, you know, cone dodging and your dad yelling at you and, and jerking on your car with a rope and stuff. And, uh, I'm like, who is this kid? You know? And then I'm like, oh shit, <laughs> Shannon Campbell's kid, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it, it's cool to watch, uh, unfortunately or unfortunately I've been around for a while and, uh, and, and watching you grow up in the sport. So, um, kind of, kind of walk us through your, you know, getting involved with your dad being, uh, who he is and uh, what, what, how you made a name for yourself too. Well, uh, I, Rick, I remember like all the way back to like fifth, sixth grade. You know, I it was leave school, go straight to the shop. Homework was after that. You know, oh it, really? Oh yeah, work came first all the time. And <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, nice. so I started pretty at a pretty young age. I kind of knew my way around a car and uh, just kind of built from there. I watched my dad race for years and loved it. You know, I I tried to be everywhere he was at every second when we were out in the event you know th- listen to him talk about you know why not to do this why not to take this line and i learned a lot and i'm pretty good at picking lines now <laughs> so you were you were like a sponge you just yeah i, I loved it i lived it yeah you know? that's awesome and then um so when did you first get go from you know rock crawler to racing rock racing rock um, racing. my first uh first rock or ultra four race would have been my first uh, rock race um i don't damn i don't even remember where it was at it was probably here honestly really yeah <laughs> probably back in like uh, 2012 or mm-hmm. something okay. like that uh in high school um well, i actually how, got my first how podium how old are you out of curiosity how old am i yeah a 26 oh okay <laughs> man the younger younger generation's taking over man i love it we're trying someone's yeah. got to carry the torch well and that's it and so we interviewed uh, maddie moon and woody rose okay you know, so Woody's freaking 21. 21 years old. Uh, Maddie was 26, 27. Yeah, she's so, like my age. Yeah, yeah. So it was, I, and that's exactly what they said. It's like, I, you know, we're the next generation coming up. Hell yeah. 100%. Yeah. That's, I'm, I'm stoked to watch my kids grow and be able to teach them. My oldest is almost three. And yeah. I'm uh, trying to get him a 50 right now, but you can't find bikes anywhere to save your life. Oh, my gosh. I know. <laughs> okay, there you go. If any of our listeners have a, a Honda 50 or something out there, right? Well, yeah. uh, we need to, need to get in contact if, with if Waylon. If Campbell doesn't have a connection for it, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't say I looked that far. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, can you tell us about your first uh, your first Ultra Four race and your and what car it was and, and how that experience was for you? Um, my first Ultra Four race, um, like I said, I don't really remember where I was at, um, but I do remember the car. It was a solid axle car that we built, and it was goofy looking. I mean, probably the goofiest looking car we've ever built. And uh, I still, to this day, I'm just I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> but <laughs> it was fun, and um, I remember. Uh, my dad, I hopped in the driver's seat. We hadn't even practiced it. Drove it around the lot when it was first built. Uh-huh. And we went straight to an event. And I just remember uh, I hopped in the driver's seat like I was going to go take it for a spin and make everything, make sure everything was good. And he told me to move the hell over. And <laughs> he got in. And I was riding a shotgun. And I I think we went a quarter mile and he smacked a tree. Oh, <laughs> just dead, in, dead into a tree. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, no, I think I should drive. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's, my dad's a... Put me through the ringer in the cars a little bit. Made me uh, aware of what not to do and what to do. So. Right, right. <laughs> Learn, do as I say, not as I do sometimes. Right. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, but my, uh, I don't know, my younger racing career, is, it was good. I, he just taught me, um, if you finish, you're going to do good. All these top guys right now, even still to this day, we're all pushing as hard as we possibly can because we all want to win. We have that, you know, that winning mentality. And um, I kind of lost that consistency of you know if you finish you're gonna do all right 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 right, right. <laughs> so i mean you obviously realize we interviewed your father shannon yep. uh three-time king back at k and the hammers 2022 it was god that was like five six months ago yeah, i know i know back in February um, there while we were talking to him he, he obviously told a bunch of stories about you and 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 bailey and whatnot and it was, so it was kind of we're kind of bringing it full circle now. We want to hear. We heard his perspective on you growing up. <laughs> now we want to hear your perspective on on growing up with him. Yeah, no, for sure. And and uh, it was cool because um, you could you could hear the passion in your dad's voice. And I mean, he, he choked up when he was talking about that moment where you guys were battling uh, 2017. 17, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. one of my favorite age. races. <laughs> and, and it was right. And so, what what, what was your perspective? Uh, you know, from that side of uh, your your on, side on growing up. Well, on on, on that race, the seventeen oh, God, race yeah. there. Right. With yeah, I can get into this battling for, with <laughs> your dad. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I was I was kicking ass. I was leading the race, and I knew it. And you know, we're all we all run the same channel. It's their same radio channel. So mm. if someone has a problem, you hear about it. Sure. Well, I never talk to begin with. I just kind of cruise, and if someone needs something, they say something to me. I just that's just how I am. And I didn't hear my dad for a while, and. I I got stuck on a climb and I didn't know there was a bypass route and all of a sudden I see this black car out of the corner of my eye just cruising up and sure as shit it was him uh-huh. and I was like that that sorry sucker he freaking didn't even say nothing didn't, <laughs> <laughs> didn't even tell me he was behind yeah and we got you know probably 30 40 miles of race course left till the finish line and I'm like hell no <laughs> I backed all the way out and took his line and tried to catch him as, as quick as I could and uh he came over a rise and I think he scooped a bunch of dirt in his face and he kind of pulled off and I just just blew past him and I well, think he heard me we pulled up to a checkpoint and he I was there first I was kind of coasting to it and he just whips around in front of me almost hits the staff workers and just pulls right in front of me it stops dead stops I think I might have actually tagged his bumper at, at the checkpoint at the checkpoint well, you gotta no. stop the, co- get the workers tag. were yeah, sc- right. the scattering oh, though because wow. <laughs> it was that oh shit <laughs> And uh, he had his car that he has now, and I was in the older generation car, mm-hmm. and I could not keep up with him in the desert. Yeah. But as soon as we got to the rocks, my car is nimble. The car was nimble, and I think he thought I gave up. And uh, we were coming down Resolution, and I slammed into his door with my tire, and I think he realized I was back there and Hello. back in it. I wasn't going to just give it to him. So we raced down Resolution, back door. I think we both went one way down yep. back door. I went left, he went right. And uh, he took the high line out into the wash, and... Uh, pre- prior during that race I realized that there was a car stuck down there and I, I knew that he was going to screw up and hit the car or or a wall uh-huh. sure as shit he hit the freaking wall blew the tire up tire I, balls go everywhere oh, yeah, they just, I just remember them exploding <laughs> and um, I just took off and I, I swore I had it won I thought there was no freaking way he's going to make it up that hill and to the finish line in time to beat me and cross the finish line and beat me by about 28 seconds <laughs> I know Son epic, of a yeah. epic finish. Well, and then there was a time differential too, right? The the um, 
offset from yeah. when you guys started. Right. Yeah. And I, so he had time. me on time because I started in front Corrected of him. Corrected time, yeah. yeah. Mm. And so I just had to beat him by like 30 seconds yeah, or something like so that. Yeah, so close. <laughs> so close. Yeah, that was a heartbreaker for but, me. But yeah. But uh, definitely, uh, for sure, one of my favorite races with sure. him. Sure. I mean, that's pretty cool to go toe to toe with yeah, your, yeah. your pops. Yeah, so. he's a he's a legend. Yeah, so he is a look legend. Up to him. He's <laughs> he casts he's a big like shadow. We called, we called him the Godfather. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, he is, and it's it's yeah, and he is he's getting up there now. He is the Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a grandfather. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> grandfather. You you guys making him grandfather? That's right. Stuff, oh, yeah. So that's cool. <laughs> so your legacy, or your you're you're making your own waves and doing your own thing, and obviously we. I think it was a pre-show we were talking about the, the SEMA car, the car that you displayed at SEMA a few years ago that you built in like 31 days or something like that. Yeah, days. we uh, we built my car in 37 and the twin to mine, which my uh, brother-in-law actually has uh, uh, in 31 days. Right. So and that was a mad dash. I don't think I've ever worked so much in my whole life. <laughs> I was going to say, did anybody sleep? Or what Not was... really, man. I... And that's all TIG welded, right? Oh, I mean, yeah, every inch. <laughs> and then, I mean, you're getting into some positions on that, those chassis where you're like, up, you uh, know, funky, and then you're working. Uh, you got Bluetooth uh, pedal, or well, so my buddy's the one who actually welds the okay. car. Uh, we call him Peta. Pain okay. in the ass. Pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> um, but he can weld. And he's a he, he's a tall he's a tall dude. I I swear I don't know how the hell he fits into some of those positions and gets up in there and does his thing. But man, they look good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, was... Well, you want to make sure your car is built. I mean, oh, yeah. as best you can because what you guys put those things through is. I mean, just seeing today, it's it's unreal. I mean, what what they the punishment they take, and then of course the accidents that occur, the 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 wadding, and and people walk away, and and or they just roll the car over and you know pull the pull the spark plugs out, yeah, <laughs> crank it over and freaking fill it with fluids, and off you go again, you know. Yeah, it doesn't work like that anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Shit's way too expensive. Yeah, now. yeah, right. <laughs> right. So but. so how interchangeable is like. Bailey just put in a new transmission. Yep. So is that the same as all the cars? So that, that's that been our goal for probably the past right. five years is trying to get everything to the point where pretty much everything is interchangeable. And for the most part, it is. Um, like trannies, shocks, all that stuff's pretty uh, pretty interchangeable. Universal. All the motors are the exact same. Uh-huh. Uh, T cases are the same. A arms are the same. All the suspension stuff's pretty much styled. So. Yeah. That's, so that makes it good. Yeah, because that's uh, what well, we were talking about when we were over there watching the tranny go in I, I go I bet they're all the same you know it just makes sense well, yeah could you imagine carrying spares for three cars and right. everything I mean right. I, you'd need two semi trailers yeah right, right. <laughs> and your semi trailer is pretty packed right oh right yeah now, I know <laughs> well and that's what we were saying I mean it's like what what do you carry I mean how many spare transmissions do you carry when you're when you're uh, running four cars Plus side by sides, plus oh yeah, you know it's, whatever. I mean, so do you carry two transmissions? Or do you just carry one spare? Or there's four three? in there. Wow. Oh, yeah, you never know, man. Yeah. Sometimes you find that one transmission that just lasts you forever, and you don't want to pull it out because you know it's the <laughs> right. It's that's the reliable. One. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> and you put a new one in, and it, it goes to crap in the first thirty seconds or something. <laughs> but man. yeah, you never know. So we got to keep. We try and keep spares like all that stuff. One for at least every car and all the uh-huh. the big components. Yeah. 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 So Very is cool. It, is there like when you go in to grab a spare, uh, is there like a ticket that you got to punch or something? It's like, oh, no, that goes on Waylon's bill. No, that goes on Bailey's bill. No, it's just a collective uh, yeah. bill. Yeah. It, I could see at the end of the year that at Christmas time, it's like all these, these <laughs> receipts come out. <laughs> like, okay, well, sorry, guys. there's no Christmas mm-hmm. presents for you this year. Here's a bill. You went through oh, yeah. three transmissions, two transfer cases. <laughs> no. Um, no, that's cool. So how much have you been? involved with like engineering and coming up with ideas and and stuff um i try and stand as involved as i can uh i have a day job so Mm -hmm. i'm usually only there at night or i go in in the mornings early before work sometimes but um when we're building a brand new car i try and be there as much as i possibly can and try and be a part of it so that way i know what's coming and what you know what's what's the new thing you know so right and so uh you want to talk about your day job a little bit sure yeah no it's a I'm just I'm basically just doing the only thing I really know how to do is fabricate and weld and uh, I work at a, a shop called AZP Concepts and we do uh, aftermarket UTV parts okay so cages light bars you know just things like that all that stuff yeah I mean, nothing nothing crazy off the wall but I enjoy doing it welding's an art to me uh-huh. I mean I could do it for the rest of my life yeah <laughs> right. oh and it's a great skill to have as Absolutely. you know oh, 100% I've, I mean, I've met so many people who can't even 
melt something together. It's really right. not that hard. <laughs> right, right, right. But you grew up with it, and yeah. it's like it's second nature. But it, it's cool that you love it and and have a passion for it that you you know excel. And, 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 it's, like right? I said, it's, it's hard easy. not to, and it's yeah. the only thing you ever grew up knowing. Right, you know. Right, and right. It's always gonna pay the so bills. Golf cart That's parts. Right. <laughs> Someone's always gonna need something. Fixed. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's true. No, for sure. And that, that you know the trades uh, have gone. I mean, it's just harder and harder to find good craftsmen. Oh, yeah. Whatever well, it may be. Whether someone willing to, metal to do the time machining. is the big yeah. thing. Everybody's lazy nowadays. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to put in the effort to get ahead. Well, and as you know, you've seen, uh, I'm sure you probably got some or have worked with a lot of the old school equipment, you know, oh, yeah. and now with the CNC stuff or people going out and buying these plasma cutters and stuff for their home. That I mean, it's amazing what you can get oh, for your home fabrication deal well, where you. you 3D printers, yeah, man. 3D I mean, yeah, printers. I love like, those things. I mean, it all costs money. <laughs> But it, 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 you know, a true machinist or a craftsman that actually knows how to measure in the thousands and, you know, make the proper cuts and yeah. welds and everything. Yeah. It's like that's a dying art. It is a it dying really art. I, the amount of people I meet who can't read a damn tape measure blows me away. Right. <laughs> hey, can you, what's the number down there? Yeah. Uh, One, two, three, four, <laughs> yeah. five lines. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, how many are here? <laughs> well, I mean, we're we're huge fans of Mike Rowe. You know, I mean, he's yeah. we follow him. I watch his uh, podcast. I listen to his, his uh, shows on podcasts, and and of course, he has his YouTube channel and whatnot. So, but I mean, he's a huge you know advocate of the trades and unions and whatnot. So, uh, we need to really push people back in that direction. I mean, whether it's plumbers, electricians, yeah. you know. Carpenters, uh, auto mechanics. Well, that's what that's like I was saying. Though. Nobody wants to put in the work. Yeah, right. All the yeah, I love doing, and I love being hands on with stuff. I don't. I don't want to sit at a computer all day and no. you know, just type well, stuff or draw things. <laughs> and it's 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 the sense of satisfaction. At the end of the day, you got something tangible. You can look at something that you built, right? And yeah, go, it's exactly. You, there's a sense that. of pride in sense it. Sense of pride. You take pride in your work, oh, yeah. but then there's that something tangible that you walk out of that shop going, "I just built this." Oh you yeah, know? and I love. I love. When I go somewhere and I'm like, yeah, I made that. Yeah. You know, like yeah. the UTV cages and stuff. I could, I, I'm not trying to brag or nothing, but no. I'm, a, I'm a pretty good welder. Sure. I, so I, I love, like I said, I love doing it. It's an art to me. So yeah. I take pride in it and I want to be better. So every day I come in and try and do better than the last. Well, you know? that's, all you, that's all you can do, right? Is just, just improve every day. That's, that's exactly. Good. That's the perfect Life's boring attitude. if you don't keep trying. Nope. No. You're right. right. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely exactly, right. Exactly. Good, good words, man. You got you know, some wise words for, uh, <laughs> for young Young lad. Well, you're coming from a young lad. Yeah, but he's he's uh, his years. I would say by the time he was age uh, uh, ten or twelve, he probably lived uh, would would have the wits of a twenty year old with his dad. Um, and, and I don't skills. know. It took me a, <laughs> took me a while to grow up. I, <laughs> I was a pretty big smart ass. Were you? I was yeah, oh, yeah. You were, you I got were, my ass you, beat a lot. <laughs> you weren't a model child, so now that you're a dad. How is that going to carry over with your parenting? It's rough. I feel sorry for my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's the eye opener, right? Yeah, it you're really like, is. You're like, damn. So do you apologize to your dad? You're out, dad. I'm yeah, sorry. No, I, hey, man, I'm sorry. This is hard. <laughs> it is. It's it's a, literally another full-time job. Oh, yeah. Kids. It is. And it I, is. I love hanging out with them and doing stuff, but yeah, trying to put a roof over their heads and yeah. and come home at a decent hour. Is, and and doesn't yeah. work in my have, line of work. Yeah. Have, have family time and, yeah, and... Then when they start going to school, and it's like, oh my gosh, yeah. Now, trust me, I, I, I'm there right there, or was right there at one point. I mean, b- my oldest is 25, I think, 24, 25. And then my next uh, child is 23, and then I have a daughter that's 15 or 16 now. Wow. So uh, she's almost 16, and she's she's got a lot of uh, attitude sometimes. Oh, I bet. I, my, little, <laughs> my little sister is a handful. <laughs> <laughs> she was a good girl, a good kid, but uh, she just mean <laughs> yeah she just I don't know, she just been put up with shit because she put up with all my shit for years. right right, <laughs> right. Wow. so how was you yeah so your relationship growing up with her and honestly she was she was my best friend yeah up. she really was i we had our um, our moments well, when sure. we were younger but we we're really close and we just learned to get along because we were literally with each other every day yeah you know we i mean i remember summers where we would leave for three months at a time and not even be back for the first couple of weeks of school because we were out following my dad's uh, racing career sure right, and right. so it was just me and her yeah and i loved you it you guys entertained each oh, other yeah. and yeah, fought a lot but yeah you know, our 
she's still we're really close yeah no it's awesome it's it's cool to see the whole family connection there and you guys helping each other i mean it's like you know right before this podcast you're laying under the car putting the skid plate back on you know and <laughs> stuff. Oh, yeah. and it's, well, it's, it's, not, it's not a one-man it job no, you gotta, it takes not. an army yeah, <laughs> yeah. sure but it, it's it's cool that and and you know a lot of the racers i mean they're they're getting in working on the cars and you know we talk about the camaraderie on this podcast of other racers helping racers and oh that's see it one all the thing time. i love about this sport is oh. how much people help each other out yeah and i literally I, I always tell people about that i mean it just it's like a big family yeah know? so growing up in it as a kid because you you were in the pits before you were racing and and your dad being who your dad was i mean you got to have a a story that sticks out or something a of helping somebody out or somebody helping your dad out or anything like uh, I watched him roll a lot of stuff <laughs> growing up and there was a lot of fixing but everybody was there yeah <laughs> I mean um shit I don't know I probably uh how's this uh 2010 at KOH my dad racing his uh very first IFS car um blew a tranny and they fixed it and they replaced it in probably an hour, hour and fifteen minutes. Okay. Dropped the pan, the dropped the skid plate, pulled yeah. the tranny out the bottom, and and he was back on his way. But I mean, it was like the whole, the whole all the whole pit area just kind of swarmed in. It was just, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Just yeah, bench that's pressed like the, it. That's out, like the third year. <laughs> third year there's probably only like 500 people out there yeah yeah was, when it, yeah that was that was yeah still at the towards the beginning where yep. it wasn't like crazy like oh my gosh koh nah, oh. 100,000 people on the lake no, bed koh it's, it's freaking so boon road i know so what do you, what, that's that's <laughs> another good one it's like you've seen koh go from like where spectators are helping roll over cars to now it's i mean this year was overwhelming at a couple points on the lake bed I will, I, my overwhelming moment was the fir- was the first weekend when the trophy trucks trophy were there. Trophy trucks, yeah. And we were sitting at the at the BF Goodrich garage yep. at, the, at the corner out yep. there near the firewood pile, and the cars coming and going oh, on Boone Road insane. was unbelievable. I, so what I love seeing is so we're usually one of the first people on the lake bed. So I get the – every year we go back, and the lake bed's a little bit bigger when we get there, a little bit bigger, a little right. bit bigger. And when we got there this year, man, it was – it was already a city. Yeah. I mean, there was so many damn people out there already. There's probably half the half the people that there were just coming because of the coming and going. Right. And it it's nuts. I it's like Burning Man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Burning Man for rednecks, man. Yeah. Burning Man for gearheads. Yeah, gearheads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah I mean, exactly uh, it. To think about you know the pandemic, this COVID stupidity that's been been never ending, oh, uh, yeah. or it seems like it anyway. Uh, I wonder if. Well, I, I know it plays into it. I mean, people are still work from home, or they're or they're or they're taking their stimulus checks, or whatever it is they're yeah. doing. But I, I, I'm kind of curious as to what KOH 2023 is going to shake out to be. If it's going to be another record-breaking event, or if it's going to be I, as I like so. it is now, or what? I mean, Honestly, I think it's just going to keep growing. I, I mean, too. you keep changing it up. You add different classes. You do this stuff. Like next year, there's going to be the electric vehicle class. Yeah, right. So. You know, it's. Um, I I don't think there's anywhere to go but up, really. Sure. And I think everybody's so bored from being stuck at home, yeah. Yeah. having to deal with all this shit. There's no mask mandates out there. No. There's no nothing. You can no. just be yourself. It's the wild west. Yeah, that's well, right. it, <laughs> it was cool. So 2020 KOH right when they did have yeah. the COVID tests and stuff. I mean, it it really was a testament to. That was 21. Or 21. It was 21. Yeah, 21. Yep. Yeah. That was a testament to pulling that off because in in California, yeah, as you know, I, I mean, I know you're not California, you're Arizona, but it it's just an absolute shit show with our governor, and, <laughs> and it's like, I hear. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, how is this going to happen? But we are out in the desert. I mean, there's a lot. You put some logic to it, and you're like, this could happen, and it happened, yeah, and it, it wasn't a super super spreader. No, and it was like, oh, okay, hey, we can we can go racing out in the desert. And and it was it was a, I, I thought it was a great event because the numbers were definitely down, and so mm-hmm. it was more intimate and I, it just was more relaxed. I mean, the racing was awesome, always is going to be awesome, but the crowds were were less. Yeah, and it was the, the ones who you the, know want to the be die there. Hearts. Yeah, exactly. They live for that shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I get it because there was there. I had some friends that didn't go, but they have health issues and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it your choice, you know, whatever. Yeah, but that's what I always tell people. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, I mean, I. I I don't like to talk politics or anything, no. but I'm not going to 
judge you based on what sure. you think. I, I'm going to judge you based on how you treat me or anybody yeah. else around you. you know, it's but don't keep me from, from uh, going racing. Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> yeah. You do you. Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> you. It. So Everybody should do themselves. So <laughs> what do you think with uh, this MAO, Mid-America Off-Road, now taking over the series and then Dave concentrating on just King of the Hammers? Uh, I'm curious to see how it plays out. Um, I hope that uh, these new owners know that there's growing pains. Yeah. And uh, this is a really different sport. Yes. And it's hard to uh, hard to get people to show up, hard to please people. There's a lot of us, and we're all very one way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's, a, it's a big country, and you've got the East Coast contingent. You've got the West Coast contingent. Yeah. It's, you you yeah. try to make them all happy at the same time. I yep. don't know if that's possible. Is this, this your first race with them because this is their third Right? Correct. Yeah. yeah I so this, this is my first, first race since KOH. Yeah. yeah. But I like it. Yeah. I, I like what they're doing. They're on top of stuff. The payouts are better. And Entry fees they're, are down. They, they spread the, the... They've had everything so priced up. I mean, mm-hmm. entry fees and all this stuff. And I, they're probably still about the same price, but it's not one lump sum. It's kind of spread out between, you know, if they raise the price of pit bands or the price for ticket admissions and they drop the cost of um, entry fees. You sure. Know? But it's still spread out and I'm sure it's still about the same, but it's just nice. Yeah. It's just, you know, you don't quite, you don't see it up front. <laughs> well, it's cool. It's like JT said at the uh, driver's meeting yesterday, you know, it's like we're, we're getting back to the way it was 10 years ago, you know, and everybody applauded. So, yep. uh, I, I mean, they're, they're making the effort, so I hope it works out and, uh, um, so far, so good, and it, it was encouraging. You know, we've heard the last couple races, race finishes, the main finishes, they come up, people are on the podium, you know, after a 30, 30 minute, if there anybody wants to throw a red card or anything, nope, no red cards, yeah. here's your trophy and check. And that's, that's perfect. And, I, right? You know, I hate showing up and waiting. Yeah. Uh, hurry yeah. up and wait for yeah, everything. Yeah, that's right. all I ever do. <laughs> right, right, exactly. For sure. So, so just out of curiosity, I mean, you, you you've raised this today. This weekend series is short course. Obviously, KOH is a, is a long event, or long race. What's your preference? You like Ooh. both? You don't care? That's a tough one. I yeah. uh, I enjoy both a okay. lot, uh, and for different reasons. I like this stuff because I like beating doors off and you know, you know, getting tire to tire with somebody, and I th- I just think that adrenaline rush is just there. But I'm also very. Uh, I'm a pretty laid back, mellow person, so I like the desert race stuff too. And I'm just by myself, so I'm just always in my head, just cruising. <laughs> so, but it, so yeah, that's it. I mean, the solo driver deal. You know, you and your dad, and, and were you kind of pushed to go that direction, or you said, "No, I, I want a single seat car." Or, no, or I, what? I wanted to go. Single you wanted seat. to go single yeah, seat. So I actually, uh, the very first, my very first win I ever got, I my dad. Uh, burnt his feet at Glen Helen. That was the, the uh, power steering line, yes. huh? Yeah, yeah I remember that. He was trying to get out and hit a camper and flew out the front window. <laughs> Jesus. Um, Man, that was brutal. And so, he, got, he got severely burned. Yeah, he had, uh, they claimed it as second degree burns, but what they didn't recognize was that it was a chemical burn. Mm-hmm. So they didn't treat it the same. So Ooh. it just kept eating at it. It never quit getting right, worse. So right. it turned into a third degree burn. They had to do skin grafts. But he was fresh out of the hospital with skin grafts, and we went to Badlands in Indiana. And it's a muddy race. I mean, that's probably the muddiest race I've ever done. Uh-huh. And I I drove for him. Uh-huh. And I had no no radio contact, no nothing. I was just driving around the track. That's all I was doing. <laughs> and uh, when I finished, my mom was standing there with the checkered flag and my dad was standing there just clapping his hands with a big old shit eating grin and <laughs> i got out and i'm like where'd i finish they're like you won and i'm no way you're lying <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good That's but awesome. yeah no it's that was a good time <laughs> so so um you, you say you're all on the same comms but it um i gotta imagine and i don't know you're pretty quiet in the car and and uh uh, you just you get in a zen state. I mean, where's your mental state when you're racing? I mean, uh, I, obviously, short course is a whole lot different than your mental state when you're 200 plus miles out in the desert. So, and K- so zen's a perfect word for it. So <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I remember one time I was at Glen Helen, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. Dan Campbell came up, and we were sitting at the starting line for the main race, and he thought I was sleeping. So I, I, <laughs> 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 I used to do this thing where I'd like. I'd get into like this state where I, I'd literally just I'd kind of be napping, uh-huh. and I'd I'd let my head head and helmet hang off my my Hans device, uh-huh. 
and just I just hang there. Okay. And um, I close my eyes and just breathe. I just calm myself way down. So you like meditate? Do you yeah, meditate or so do that's you? That's kind of like yeah, what it was. That's what you're doing. And uh, I mean, people would think I was sleeping. Yeah. And it would take me a second to realize that they were there because I was just so banging on the roof of the car. Wait, yeah, like. yeah, slapping my helmet. <laughs> and like, hey, get up! It's time to go. And I'm like. Oh, I'm shit. not sleeping. Yeah. Oh, they're grabbing running. the, they're grabbing yeah. the AD. Yeah. Yeah. Clear! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly it. <laughs> oh, so that's on. it. So you get yourself in that, that mental state there, yeah, and then it's calm just... calm myself down. I haven't been nervous for a race since. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> that's that's freaking awesome, man. Yeah, because I, I would be a wreck out there. I, I, I used just, to. My freaking my right leg would shake so bad. Really? Oh, get the yeah, sewing would, machine leg? That is exactly yeah. what it was. <laughs> it, it would get so bad. <laughs> but now it's steady. <laughs> well, and, and obviously not your first rodeo anymore. You've had a ton of experience and seat time where it's just like, okay. And I, I can't even imagine where your dad's at where he's just like, okay. Yeah, we're, he's just oh, we're a racing. wild man. Yeah, he's, yeah. Like, he's a nut. <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah, yesterday in qualifying when he looped it there and stuff, but... Um, oh my gosh! So that's that's interesting. I, I that's cool to hear that you just you <laughs> yeah. get in that state. And Everybody's got to do something. Yeah. you know, some people have their lucky things that they ha- their sure. rituals they have sure. to do before yeah. things. And I that's your thing. Any. I just yeah, I just yeah, relax. I like that. That's <laughs> perfect, man. <laughs> so what's next after here for your next race? Uh, I believe we're going to South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, mm. in uh, June. It's actually over my. Uh, my oldest is birthday, so I think we're going to take him and find something to do out there. There you go. Sure. <laughs> is that the teardown in Tennessee? Yeah, I think so. Yep. Yeah. Teardown in Tennessee. Yep. Yeah. Right so I'm excited. I've never been this track, so okay. I'm curious to see what it what it looks like. And That's the one that's in the woods. There's a lot of woods, a lot of trees. Yeah. Me and trees don't get along. No. <laughs> you do, um, you're not doing any of the East Coast stuff? Um. Well, that's, that'll be an East Coast race. Yeah, well, I guess that one is. Yeah, yeah but uh, like we are go. We were talking today about doing Crandon and stuff, but we're not really. It gets pretty tight right there. We want to hit uh, Jay, Oklahoma for sure. Yeah. But uh, a week and a half after that is uh, Sturgis. Sturgis sounds awesome. Oh, it is amazing. It's a fun time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually thinking about a. I don't probably probably take a, bi- a motorcycle up and ride around over there and I'm talking about uh, riding home. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So, do you have it? You have a motorcycle? You got no? I no, don't. Just I've been, rent uh, one or something. Been looking a lot lately, and I have a bunch of friends who yeah ride motorcycles all the time. I've been on a bunch of them. But so you don't have a rec wheeler? You don't have a side by side or anything? You got your one side by side? Yeah, and then I have a I have a new general I've been working on. Just okay, I haven't done anything with it really. Well, and you got just kids too, slow, so there's, yeah. there's that. Yeah, I bought a house last summer. So oh yeah, there you go. Out. And a day job. <laughs> well, congratulations. I know that's uh, yeah, home ownership's great, but boy, the uh, no, the bills it, don't stop coming in. It isn't. <laughs> yeah, no, it's all on you. Yeah, you, don't, you can just you can't call your landlord and say, hey, the hot water heater's uh, gone yeah, out. Yeah, that's exactly. Totally it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get home to work some more. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Wife's like, hey, this no, is it. Working. Never stops. <laughs> you got no hot water. What do you mean? Uh, it's no all good. Hot water. <laughs> All good. Better than than having to pay rent to somebody oh, else. Yeah. You're paying rent to yourself, That's basically. Exactly. Yeah. No One day I'll benefit from this. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> you you absolutely will. Absolutely so, will. Um, so your car, the, the current car you're driving right now, um, so what, about four years old now. Uh, yeah, it's so, about four years. Yeah. So how, how long are you going to run that? Or you got something in the in the works? You thinking about building uh, a new no, one? We What's, actually we kind of have this system with my family. So basically, one of us gets a new car. Pretty much. Every year, right? So my dad's next in line. Yep. His car is yeah. from 2015. So he's actually uh, in the works of trying to build a new one right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's going two seater. Yeah, that's what he said, <laughs> two seater. Yeah. Yeah. Because what well, was funny? Because on the podcast and a few people we've we've talked to people or interviewed drivers before race or whatever, um, and and he mentioned something about his his you know staying on course and map and vision and stuff and then right. he got off course this year it's right? already a pain in the ass by yourself but that right. guy can't see <laughs> i don't know how you do it by yourself man that's just that's oh, I, crazy I, but i take wrong turns all the time yeah i just don't tell anybody but <laughs> <laughs> tell now <laughs> well that's cool anybody see that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we delete that part no. <laughs> We're good. yeah edit edit you got the timestamp on that um but yeah, so uh, two seater, and then he he alluded to uh, some electric uh, uh, operation too. So so my sister actually got a uh, 
with the whole new EV class, they picked, uh, I think it was like six or seven drivers, mm-hmm. and she got she actually was one of the, oh, the picks. Okay. So she's oh. getting a full electric motor and all that the stuff. The electric package. We just got to make Figure a car out. around it. Okay. <laughs> cool. Oh, so yeah, that's... You got to do something about the sound, because we need oh. that. I know, right? I so hate... I've, 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 actually, I was walking around the parking lot, and a car almost hit me the other day. Yeah. And uh, I, was, I was walking next to my buddy, and I'm like... Fucking electric cars! You can't hear them. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, if I would have heard it, I would have moved. Exactly. You know? <laughs> no, I, in, in, living in the Bay Area is Tesla Central, oh, yeah. you know, Priuses and everything, and I'm like, oh my gosh! And it, it is. It's like backing out of the the driveway and going down the, our street, and it's like, oh man! And then you know, we got we're friends with Kyle Siglin that's got the you know EV and Boston stuff. Kyle. Yeah, yeah, Boston Kyle, and so uh, it was cool to see him out here this weekend. But he's going going down the track, and it's just. You know, so anticlimactic, <laughs> and you can hear all the clanging and banging no on the noise. car. You know, all the joints working and everything that <laughs> yeah. you normally like. Your cars, you don't hear any of that because it's just loud, rowdy, spicy yeah. motor. You know, exactly, um, which it, we like. Yeah, oh, which yeah, we trust love. One hundred percent that way, too. especially on these short courses. When you forty four hundreds get going out there, man, and battling it, I mean. It just puts a smile on my face. Well, and it sets all the car alarms off in the parking yeah, lot. Yeah, it was setting off car alarms. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Real. Awesome. Yeah. It's like every time the, you that. guys go around, I'm like, woo, woo, I used to love going to parking garages as a oh, kid. Oh, I bet. Huh? I'm just, <laughs> just banging rev limiter and just setting them all off. <laughs> <laughs> freaking awesome. Oh, my gosh. That's freaking great. Because actually, my, uh, my sister's old solid axle race car actually used to be my daily for school. No way. Yeah, I used to drive that to school all the time. Wow. No way. <laughs> Only in Arizona. Only in uh, Arizona. You can get away with pretty much everything. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you license side by sides and Wild stuff. Wild West. Yeah. Wild West. Pro open carry. You know, take a Arizona. Paper. Yeah, open. Yeah. Gun rack. Oh, yeah. Gun rack. Everything's in the parking great lot. over there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Shit. That's that's I know I don't know we if I can move out of California. I don't, first. I, I don't know if I can handle the heat of Arizona. Do you live down in the valley or you live? Yeah, in, I live in the valley. So yeah, so I'm uh, twenty minutes outside of Phoenix. Phoenix. Well, sorry. Right. Now I'm. <laughs> I'm pretty far now. A little, little like, ways out. I'm like 45 minutes from the shop, which is 20 minutes from Phoenix. So I'm about a hour, a little over an hour to get to Phoenix. So what? what's the hottest day? Ooh, that's a hard one. <laughs> July, August is pretty, pretty gnarly. But I mean, I've seen 121, 122. Oof, yeah, fuck that. No, <laughs> no. That's a stay the fuck at home day. That's, that's <laughs> just yeah. Or you got air conditioning at the shop, I'm assuming. But nope. you're welding. No air conditioning. So you're welding in 120 degree heat. We got swamp coolers. Uh-huh, uh huh. But, but still, you know, yeah. But it's it's so hard much, to keep it cool. <laughs> only so many, so much air movement you can do when you're doing. Yeah. That, yeah. Exactly. What the hell? Yeah. Exactly. And then it gets humid and. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Right. So, um, wow. I don't know. I mean, you, we've. This is. I'm super excited to have you here. In the, in the, in the, <laughs> I'm excited in to be here. Studio. So, what's what's your future? What what do you, what are you thinking now for future racing plans and and stuff? And and obviously, you got the family. You're gonna is you know taking some time and stuff. But um, what what are you thinking for the next couple years? I've been uh, trying to work on some new sponsorship stuff. And, yeah. But uh, other than that, you know, I'm just kind of going with the flow that's just kind of yeah. i just I that's like how to you live. do it. yeah i just roll with the moment <laughs> well and, and the you know the cool thing we we started talking about it briefly before but uh i i do just i mean it's cool because you grew up i, I mean it had to be and I, i'm putting words in your mouth maybe but and correct me if i'm wrong but growing up under you know your father's shadow so to speak but you were able to take that knowledge soak it up like a sponge like we said earlier but you created a name for yourself Yep. And, and you know, that's freaking cool, man. Yeah, no, that was... Um, I actually did an interview probably probably four years ago, and I actually talked about that. And um, I kind of felt like I was in a shadow. My dad has a really big name for himself. Sure. And uh, I was just having a having a rough year, and I just felt stagnant. Like, I wasn't going anywhere. And, right. You know, my sister's a female, and she's a hell of a fucking driver. Yeah. So she's got a lot of opportunities rolling, and I just felt like I wasn't going nowhere. Uh-huh. I almost quit racing, actually, for oh, a while. Oh, really? Yeah, I just, I, I didn't feel like there was um, anywhere for me to go. And um, I had one good race, and then the whole rest of the year just worked out for me and got my drive back and made me want to strive to be better and, you know. Right. And, uh I'm here, you know. It, it, I, I, it, I got my name now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, but that's that's tough to do. I mean, you know, people say, "Oh, you're you're lucky," you know, you get all this opportunity, but 
you know, a lot of you, you've seen it before. I mean, people will take that and take advantage of that opportunity. Well, and it's exactly and it. you, you can only get so far with mm-hmm. just an opportunity until you have to take it into your own hands and make it to what yeah. you want. Yeah. No, that's great, man. That's 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 good parenting right there from from your parents. That's oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know taking pride in your work and and uh, you know just hard work basically to get that's, where oh, you were. Yeah, this this exactly. wasn't. They didn't just throw you keys to this freaking epic. You know, oh, yeah, freaking it, IFS car. and That was one of the big things growing up, too. If we wanted to race, we had to be the ones to work on it. Nobody's going to do anything for you. You had to do it yourself in case you had to work on it yourself, you know? You sure, never know you where you're going to be stranded. Or <laughs> yeah, you're out in KOH in the desert. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, for sure. And, I mean, again, Miles we saw that pit. as a perfect example when we were in the pits just a little bit ago, you know, waiting on you. It was... You're watching you work on your sister's car. You were working on your own car. Your father was working on his car. Yes, there were a lot of other people milling around, and, and, and Brian was working on his car. I mean, it was, I'm like, this is like a, a beehive of activity, you oh, know? Yeah, it, it never just, stops. You no. yeah. said it takes a whole army to get shit done. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's nonstop on the weekend. So after a race weekend, I mean, Monday, I got to imagine you're just like, decompress and just like straight okay, to work I, I, yeah i know but you're at work <laughs> but you're like just park the car i'm not touching it for a couple oh, days no, i'll be down there no? after it and i'll have that thing stripped down and nothing <laughs> there you go Got it. how long does it take you to strip the car uh i could have a card probably completely like to a bare chassis or just like well to, just to the point of yeah, like where you're checking everything out. for for yeah for I mean, race I, for I the next have race probably a day really if i had a whole day to work I mean, you could have diffs out, tranny, TKs, sure. motor. I mean, you could literally do everything. It's easy to pull shit apart. It's right, it right. So then time. that was the next question was like, okay, now you get all these parts in uh, or refurbished, whatever's going on, checked out, and then uh, putting it back together is how long, roughly? Um, it takes a while. Yeah. I mean, you got to be tedious. You don't want to you don't want to miss something. Right. You know, I've done it. <laughs> I right. remember one time I put a tranny in without a torque converter. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. What? That didn't work very well. Yeah. I was pissed. <laughs> you start the motor and you instantly knew. No, I, I had everything together and I I was like, oh, yeah, I got to do torque converter bolts. And I, but I had the drive shafts hooked up. The T case was in already. Fuck. And I had to pull everything back apart. <laughs> so oh, my gosh. I learned, really uh, you just, just take your time. Just take a little bit longer. Right. Just make sure it's right. Right. Yeah. I mean, and the, trying to do, if you have somebody that jumps in and tries to help you with something and you kind of interrupt your, your process, I have, I mean, uh, that's. I get like, sidetracked easy. <laughs> <laughs> Squirrel. Yeah, well, it's, like, I mean, it's, it's a simple thing. Like in my case, it's like when you're loading the Jeep on the trailer and you're, you're starting to strap it down, then inevitably somebody walks over and starts talking oh, to you and you I meet mean, your routine has been broken. You're like, oh, yeah, that's exactly. Like, that's you, why I you, keep, I was telling, telling uh, uh, someone else today that I, I literally, I never leave anywhere without my headphones, and that they're in my ears twenty four seven. And it's just kind of my way of like, don't just let me do my thing. Yeah, you know, I I just work better that way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, you cool. got your program. Yeah. And it's working for you, man. <laughs> so far. <laughs> so far, so good. I love it. So what? you uh, you you didn't have to do a last last chance qualifying. You're you did really well in qualifying for this race series. Were you taking time out of your day to come talk to us, which we super appreciate. No, I love being here. Like I said, this is my first podcast, so I'm kind of excited about right it. Right on. Well, I'm glad we're, we're, we're your first. We're, we beat out a few other podcasts here. Like, excellent. You want because we, we are the number one po- off-road podcast. We try to Hell be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we try to be. Even in our own minds, even. <laughs> <laughs> Look good, feel good. Yeah. You want to give some shout-outs to some of your sponsors? Uh, you, this is your chance. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to thank Monster Energy, obviously. They're my number one. Uh, Nitto Tire, Fox Shocks. Uh, man, there's so freaking many. Motive Gear, uh, Method Race Wheels, uh, Warren Industries, and a bunch more. I, I mean, we have so yeah. many. <laughs> yeah, I know. You guys are loaded up over there, but uh, you guys deliver, too, on the racetrack. So that, that helps so uh, keep people when those phone That's calls right. come in. You know? <laughs> yeah. Hey, we need. Uh, winch and uh, this <laughs> and that. Okay, sounds yeah, good. No problem. Just look but, for it. But yeah, and and, and uh, you know, I can't tell you how many posters I've seen with you. You know, you guys on them and stuff. And I mean, that's got to be pretty cool when you're, uh, you know, magazine articles and stuff. And yeah, we actually. My mom kept every dirt sports issue that we've really all ever been in. Yep. Cool. And yeah, no, they're 
There's some really good it's stuff. It's cool. In there. It is. Cool. <laughs> I miss dirt sports. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was a good, good magazine there. So what? And I mean, I, we're gonna have to wrap up because we want to get back to, you, to your car. But uh, I'm just curious. So you, you go to SEMA every year? Does your family go every year? Um, I try. Uh, it's it's pretty close to the national race, so you know we gotta kind of pick and choose mm-hmm. if we go. In the last couple of years, it's just been like maybe one or two days. Mm-hmm. Do they keep you on a pretty tight? I mean, you I gotta probably spend oh, no, time in no, all no. the different oh, booths just, and whatnot. I just, <laughs> I just roam. Oh yeah, I'll try and walk every bit of those thirty yeah. miles. Yeah. Wow, yeah. yeah, I will. Yeah, I will just cruise through there. Nobody's stopping me. <laughs> okay. I, it's on a mission. Yeah. I'm just curious if you know. I just remember back when you know, uh, rest in peace, Jesse Jesse Combs, but. Uh, uh, you know, they, she always made that commitment to be in the Warren booth for a couple times a day to do signings and f- f- uh, take pictures with her fans. And I mean, so they don't ever. Oh, that I mean, up. we do stuff here and Excuse there, me. you know. And I, but like I said, as soon as we're done, I'm splitting them out. I want to, I want to see stuff. Right. right? I want to see what the next big thing is. Who's coming up with this? A potential sponsor? Maybe go talk to someone to try and get a, a sponsorship. Sure. But, um, I'm just a busybody. I like to move and. I just never quit. <laughs> no, 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 Moss under Whalen. Yeah. No, no, absolutely not, man. Well, super cool. Thank you very much. Wait, for I got, I got one more. Oh, question. Oh shit, we're not done. No, I want to know. I meant, to, I missed, meant to ask your dad, but, but did he name you after Waylon Jennings? Uh, yeah, because I know it's always country music playing. So there was a, uh, a choice between two names. Okay, it was uh, Zeb. Zeb. Zeb or Waylon, yeah. Aren't you glad they chose Waylon? Yes, Waylon? I am. <laughs> <laughs> what is Zeb? Is that like an alien name or something? Uh, a guy that my dad worked with, um, one right. of his bosses is named Zeb. Oh, okay. And, it's a uh, unique name. It is. Yeah, no, it, it's different, but I'm, I'd way rather Yeah, no, that's Zeb big country Campbell. Guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Zeb Campbell. Zeb Campbell. It does, it's got a... It's not... It's not, not <laughs> no, it doesn't do it. You know, I agree. Because my I middle agree. name's Walker. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Waylon Walker Campbell. Wow. There you go. See, that, that, that's, got, that's a race car name. Right Hell yeah. There. Yeah. Hell yeah, it's yeah. A race car driver name. Ricky Bobby. Oldest is River Walker. Yeah, yeah, you did think River Walker. That's cool. One day he'll be walking on water, hopefully. Well, I want to be there. <laughs> right? <laughs> I love it, man. Well, hey, Waylon, thanks again, man. This this has been awesome. Um, we've got two of the Campbells uh, now, Chris. Yes, so, sir. you know, we got we got to work on Bailey next. So, awesome. Well, thank you guys for having me. I really oh, enjoyed no. it. Absolutely, man. This is this has been great. So, um, anything else, Chris? Uh, no, other than just uh, you want to get reach around. Uh, excuse. Oh, do you have an uh, Instagram? Yeah. Uh, well, you got Instagram, yeah. but you're not on it very much. You said. No, not I, a big I social media guy, been, which is smart. Yeah, I, like I said, I just like to live in my moment. <laughs> yeah, see. So, if you want to reach out to Jason or, or me, at uh, Instagram is Wheeling Wine and Whiskey. You can also look at our website, WheelingWineAndWhiskey dot com. When when you're there, you can it'll link you to our our uh, I rate four by four. That's right. Uh, Barrel Society, and uh, you can also have links to our merch there. Uh, you can also email Jason or I at wheelingwinewhiskey.com and we usually respond pretty quick to your, your questions or praise or even comments of if we're not at the racetrack we're not at the racetrack so anyway other than that um, yeah it is Wayland underscore shreds right that's correct yeah Wayland underscore shreds on, on the IG if you want to look them up but uh, yeah it, it, you know if you listen to this podcast you know who Wayland is so that's right it was great getting a little insight on you man and uh, totally appreciate it Andrew. With that, let's go racing. Good luck in the race. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. We're out. <laughs>